dungeons go to dungeons deep and caverns old we bust away ere break of day to claim our long forgotten everyone hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings and another episode of the deity discussion series that I like to run here periodically on the channel uh, my name is Jesse and I am the host here for those of you who are new thank you so much for joining me today and checking out my content if things pertaining to Norse heathenry uh, generally Germanic paganism and quite often what is mostly lumped into in the modern times in the term also true uh, if those things are of interest to you and you want to kind of follow me along in my pagan journey, as it were, uh, then please subscribe to the channel down below. Ding the bell notifications uh, so that way you don't miss anything. Uh, for everybody that watches on your mobile devices, you will have to make sure that your mobile device notifications are set up as well. I know a lot of people over time have uh, made mention or noted how they aren't getting notified of when I go live and when I put up new content. So all of that stuff needs to be done. Um, if you want to see my content, you want to be notified, please make sure that um, all of those things on your end are being took care of. Don't forget to check the description area down below for my link tree link. Uh, the ways that you can support the channel are all down in that link. Follow me on all of my social media. Um, if you want to become a uh, member of this channel, that link is also down in the description box below. Um, and please be sure to, if you like these videos, give them a thumbs up, share them around on your platforms, and engage down in the comments. Love to hear what you guys think of what I do here. Uh, your feedback and suggestions are always welcome and greatly appreciated. All right, so this video is episode 18, I believe, of the Deity Discussion Series. Um, if you want to check out all of the other gods and goddesses of uh, the Norse pantheon and Norse myths and legends that I have discussed already, you can uh, check out the annotated card that's somewhere up here. I never can tell if it's going to be. I think it's up here. Um, <laughs> check out that playlist uh, to, in the channel and see some of the other videos that I've done. Um, come a long way since I started doing these, and it's been quite a while uh, since we've done another one. But today's um, deity discussion is going to be on the god Bragi. Um, haven't done Bragi ever uh, in a discussion and um, I've been wanting to, to, to talk a bit about Bragi um, uh, after a recent podcast that I was on with um, Alex from the Rhetoric Rabbit Hole. I'll try to link that in the card up above as well in case you want to see that uh, podcast episode um, on Alex's channel on the Rab uh, Rhetoric Rabbit Hole channel, but we uh, talked a bit about uh, some of the other gods. I think Tyr was one of them as well, but uh, Bragi came up and um, realized that I hadn't yet talked about him. Um, so in other dating discussion videos, usually what I've gone and done is kind of go over some of what we already know as far as any texts or you know, literary sources, historical information, things that we have or know about a specific deity in question. Um, talk a bit about those sorts of things, how or if they were, you know, uh, documented as being venerated or worshipped in ancient times and pre-Christian times. Um, and then offer my own little bit of UPG and, and uh, thoughts and, and ideas on the, the god or goddess at the time that we're discussing and how the veneration or worship of that specific deity could apply in modern times. And I think Bragi is a very important one to discuss. Now, um, there is not a whole lot, I'll just say right off the bat, there is not a whole lot documented about um, Bragi in the sources. Um, we do know at least very little, uh, what little we do know is that he is possibly a son of Odin, 
Um, his mother is un. We are unsure of whose, uh, you know, who his mother is. Although the popular uh, idea is that his mother is Gunlod, uh, but again, that's I don't. I'm, I, I can't say for certain where in the sagas or in the lore uh, where that is mentioned for sure. I think it's just a popular belief, um, maybe by default. <laughs> Um, we also know that his wife is Idun, the keeper of the golden apples that keeps the, all of the gods young and immortal. Um, and we know that his um, role in the mythology and his uh, role in the uh, culture at the time was that he was a god that had a lot of precedence over the skalds, the poets, the thururs. Um, of the culture at the time. Now the Skalds and the Bards and the Thulers, uh, that these, these names that I'm referring to, these were individuals who were known for their way with weaving words. They were poets. They could tell stories, sing songs, and be very masterful over the spoken word. Um, and they were held in a very high regard in society at the time for a specific reason, which we'll get to here in, in, in a little bit. Um, some of the really neat or interesting things to note about um, Bragi is um, aesthetically, appearances wise, he is said to have a very long beard and um, runes were carved on his tongue. I believe the source for that is mentioned in the poem uh, Sigrifamol, which I will try to um, reference down in the, uh, the description of the video in case you all want to check it out and see where I'm getting that source from. I believe it's in the poem Sigrifamol, where um, there's a part where a lot of uh, mention of runes being inscribed or carved um, on various things, on all kinds of things, you know, bear paws and, and, and whatnot. And Bragi's tongue is said to have runes carved on them as well. Um, he is not exceptionally known or, or at all known for his um, physical prowess, his physical bravery. If anything, he is said <laughs> um, or, or taunted uh, by Loki as being somewhat cowardly. Um, this is referenced to in the uh, poetic Edda, in the poem Lokasena, where Loki barges into Aegir's hall and starts insulting the various uh, gods and elves and then everyone in attendance in Aegir's Hall, uh, where um, Loki basically says all kinds of, talks all kinds of smack um, about the various gods and goddesses there, some of which, or most of which, has some level of truth. Now the reason why he is probably referenced to being cowardly by Loki uh, during that time is because, again, there's no written sources um, or stories about Bragi's bravery or his prowess in battle or anything like that, unlike many of the other Aesir gods like Odin and Thor and Tyr and, and, and whatnot who are um, of the Aesir tribe and who are war gods, you know, or have a very um, prominent reputation of being brave and, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, down to the very point of when Idun, Bragi's wife, was kidnapped or captured, um, Bragi is not even mentioned to have done anything. He, he doesn't take action. He doesn't do anything. So it's probably why, um, in the lore at least, uh, Loki went off to call him a bit of a coward. Now it is interesting to note that Bragi, at least in what little we know, seems to be counted amongst the Aesir. The Aesir again being the tribe of the gods um, that are war gods, unlike the, the Vanir gods who are gods of agriculture, fertility, the land, and that sort of thing. Um, the Aesir are war gods, and uh, again, Bragi has no mentions of, of being in any sort of battles, not even uh, is he mentioned in the final battle of, of Ragnarok. Um, but what is interesting, I think, to note is that uh, while we don't hear too much of Bragi in the old sources or know of him having any sort of, you know, uh, veneration given to him uh, or worship given to him in ancient times and pre-Christian times, um, the fact is that, like I mentioned before, skalds, uh, these, these poets, uh, were very important in society. The reason for that is because, like so many cultures at the time, the, uh, the Norse 
people, the Germanic tribes, were largely illiterate, not being able to read or write, which is mostly why we have the problem nowadays of being so difficult to find written sources of how things were done, customs, uh, traditions, um, all that sort of thing, because nobody wrote anything down. Everything was spoken about through word of mouth. And the role of the skull, the, ro the role of the bard, was to tell the tales and sing the songs of great deeds done and, and, and all of these sorts of things. So they had a very prominent place in society. And I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, that they were uh, counted alongside, uh, maybe not quite as, as, as equals to, but peers. Um, peers and equals is kind of the same thing, but they had a very high, let's say, prominence in society. I want to, maybe not nobility class, but um, they were important because that's how information got shared and that's how stories were told. So the skill of weaving those words, the skill of, you know, uh, being able to poetically deliver a story and capture an audience was, was deemed to be very special and very important. So Draghi, while he may not be a prominent war god um, amongst the Aesir, he was still an important god amongst the Aesir, I like to think. Um, like I said, from what little we know about him. Now, because we don't know so much, if anything, about his worship or veneration in pre-Christian times, where do we find his place now in modern day, uh, in modern times, as modern heathens? Now, for those that don't know, I myself am not what I would consider a hardcore reconstructionist heathen. I do lean heavily and focus heavily on the historical sources and, and, and doing things in, in historical fashion, um, but it is not my, you know, like, end-all, be-all sort of thing. I, I, I use, I utilize, I should say, um, a lot of my own uh, UPG and my own experiences in my practice and I feel that that's very important uh, for me in, in, in my heathen practices. So where does Bragi fit in modern times if he does? And I think nowadays in modern times that role of the skull, that role of the poet, the, the, the bard role, the, the storyteller, the, the singers is so 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 very important because of all the things that are going on in the world around us nowadays. If you guys follow other heathen YouTubers um, and, and, and pagans here on YouTube, you're probably familiar, I've mentioned him a lot, he's been on my channel, I've been on his, is Eric Shervin, Eric Wordweaver Shervin, a, a, a skull in and of himself, as it were. And uh, he has the Raven's Call, and he's mentioned a number of times about how we live in saga times. The things that are happening now in our world, the events that are taking place, the ways in which this world is being changed and formed uh, will be sung and written about and told uh, in, in mouths of people and our descendants in, in, in many, many years to come. So the ability to, to document that, to tell those stories, to carry on the, those, those legends and those tales and continue those legacies is, is, is important now and, and, and the role of the skull, that, that role, the bragi role, um, that word itself even in Old Norse is, you know, brager is, is the word that, that describes poets. Um, super, super important to me, I think. And with hearing about in uh, the, the poem Sigrid from all about how the runes are carved on bragi's tongue and how the runes are literally an alphabet they are they are a, the written form of uh, conversation it's how the Germanic people wrote things down before um, the Latinization of, of, of the area and before everything changed over that way but the runes are literally a tool to communicate so I find it significant that on Bragi's tongue on the poet's tongue are inscribed runes those methods of communication the, the way that words are woven even now here and today through means like this through you know video platforms and social media and things how we can share stories and communicate and share knowledge and, and learn from each other and all this sort of thing i feel that in modern times if draghi's role was not written down or, or, or told about in, in in stories very much in ancient times 
how much more could that role, maybe not that specific god, but the role of the bard, the role of the skald, the bragi folks, the bragi men, the bragar men, the bragar women, whatever, um, how as important as they were in ancient times, how equally important, if not more so important, are they now in um, modern times? And how we can, as modern heathens, uh, build and develop new traditions that honor these gods who maybe didn't get as much recognition or as much, you know, uh, pen on to paper, or as much screen time, as it were, um, in the old stories, and how we can sort of write those stories now. And the gods are alive, you know, just because we don't hear about them much in, in the ancient stories or in the lore uh, doesn't mean that they are any less alive and, and how we can connect with them. Now, connecting with the gods, that, that's a whole different, you know, subject and it's a whole different story about how we as individuals connect to the gods. I'm a bit indifferent on that, uh, not indifferent, but I have my own views on that uh, when it comes to how we connect with the sacred. I feel that it has to be done in a certain specific way um, because that's the tried and true method. Um, but I've had experiences um, with the sacred. Again, that's UPG. That's my UPG. Um, it's not anything that I can say for a fact that you will feel it the same way or that other people out here listening and watching um, have experienced their own, you know, connections with the sacred are going to say, well, it was, you know, that's the way it's always going to be. It's, it's UPG. You can't, you know, write that off as anything but it, uh, what it is. Um, but I feel that, the, that, like I said, you know, Bragi as, as a god of poetry, not necessarily the god of poetry, because I don't really see the gods as being the gods of any one specific thing, but how the connection between poetry and weaving of words and telling of stories and the singing of songs how influential that is, uh, it, how influential it was, and important as it was in, in ancient times, as much as it important is now. I mean, look at um, look at all of the, the the bands and the musical projects and the things that are coming out nowadays that that tell these stories. Bands like Heilong and Wardruna, um, uh, Volspa, and uh, Nitland, and and you know, uh, I don't know, you know, Donheim and and so many others. Um, you know, Fumidane and, and uh, just the, the, the names escape me, but we see, you know, music is itself a, a, a way of, of, it's poetry. It's, it's poetry with, with, with music and everything like that. It's, it's, it's literally art um, and, and it tells stories and, and it brings about, you know, thing, it brings things to life that perhaps were lying dormant or, you know, breathing new life into these sorts of things. So um, it's wonderful to see that the, the role of the poets is, is being so celebrated uh, nowadays and that perhaps the, the role and the importance of Bragi in modern times can be expanded and, and, and celebrated. So that's a little bit about Bragi, what little we do know and my own thoughts um, and ideas on it. I hope you guys like that little bit of an intro. I know it's not pagan at all, it's not heathen at all, and it was probably um, not the best <laughs> singing uh, or, or version of uh, the Misty Mountains, um, as as uh, may you may know or recognize it from uh, the Hobbit, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, when the dwarves are sitting around in, in, in Bag End and they're singing about their lost treasure and, and having to, you know, reclaim their 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 gold and all this thing. That is a wonderful song, and I wanted to, you know, incorporate my my ritual drum, um, which I got from Fjallvitir workshop um, some time ago. Uh, for our tribe here, it was, it's, it's, a, it's a tribal drum. I say, you know, my drum, but it's, it's in my possession here. But it is our tribe's uh, drum because everybody in the tribe contributed to getting it. But I wanted to use that, you know, and and sing a sort a short verse of a song that tells a story and, and as, as kind of like a segue into this whole thing. I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, you know, is what it is. So. With that being said, um, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up, share it around, let me know. Share it around, sorry. Let me know down in the comments um, what you guys thought of it and uh, appreciate all you guys uh, being patient with me over time because I know that the, the videos have been sporadic at best here or there, even with the podcast. So. There's been a lot going on um, in my personal life lately that has you know, shifted my focus and my uh, 
attention to more important things. Um, things are starting to simmer down a bit, settle down. Hopefully we, we've reached a kind of a plateau um, where we just kind of coast and, and, and keep that momentum going to where I can comfortably get out here and, and put out more, more content for everybody. So uh, as I mentioned before, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for your support. Um, check the description area down below for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings. And don't forget to come to the YouTube live stream with uh, Matt Petrie and I. Matt Petrie is uh, the uh, owner and founder of Odin's Beard Woodworking. He's going to be joining me this Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central for a YouTube live stream here on this channel. Um, the link for that will be down in the description. You guys can set up a reminder. Uh, so that way you can join us because we've got some really cool items to sell to help my in-laws move a few houses next door down to us. They need some financial aid and we've, Matt has been uh, tremendously generous in offering some handmade items. We've got an oh, Odin pocket altar, we've got a, um, a summer solstice rune set, we've got um, some really cool hand carved wooden rune and uh, necklaces and a Mjolnir necklace that he uh, carved. All of the proceeds of which, of those items being sold, are going to go directly to my in-laws to help them with the financial uh, needs to help them uh, pay for their, for their move and stuff. So be sure to come back and join us on Friday night, okay? That's going to be at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, I think that's 6 o'clock Pacific, and adjust the time zones to wherever you are listening or watching in the world. Hope we can uh, touch base and, and have you guys come back for that. So. That's it for me today. Thank you all so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. You guys know the drill. And until we talk again, hail, be well, and I'll see you all in the next video.